Today we're reviewing the Leatherman Rebar, the little brother of the SuperTool 300. Welcome back to the Gears and Tool channel where we do do-it-yourself projects and product reviews just like this one. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to click that bell icon so you're first to be notified when I release new videos. Today we are reviewing the Leatherman Rebar, which is similar in size to the Leatherman best-selling multi-tool, the Leatherman Wave, except in a more traditional form factor, kind of like the Super Tool 300. As we go through this review, we're going to take a look at five categories. The tool size and weight, the outside or primary tools, the pliers it offers, the inside tools or secondary tools. And finally, we'll look at the price point and the kind of intended use case scenario for a tool such as this. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So I'm gonna use a pair of kitchen shears because I find for thicker packaging like this, it's pretty easy just to cut it open with a pair of scissors. Oh, well, maybe not. So I guess we're gonna rip this off first and then use the kitchen shears. All right, that's gone. And there's the multi-tool. I'm gonna set that aside for just a second. Don't need that. And we also have a leather sheath, the instructions, which we don't need. And yeah, that's it. So let me get some of this packaging out of the way here real quick. Okay, so this is what comes in the box with the Leatherman rebar. First we have the multi-tool itself. And then we also have this sheath. So let's take a look at the sheath first. The sheath is a uh, simple leather sheath. It meets the two minimum requirements I have for a sheath, which is that it has a you know kind of a locking clasp, so the tool just can't fall out, and a belt loop. Personally, I prefer the pocket carry on like a pocket clip, but uh, these sheaths work just fine. So um, very similar to what you might find on like the Crunch or something like that. So uh, leather sheath kind of in line with the more traditional style of this tool, and then we have the multi tool itself. And then right off the bat, it feels lighter than the Leatherman Wave. So that's one benefit. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the size and weight of this thing. And then we'll um, start looking at all the features. So the Leatherman Rebar is one of the most compact medium duty multi-tools. It's only four inches long, 0.65 inches thick, and 1.18 inches wide. So definitely smaller than the Wave in every uh, category. And Leatherman has this listed at only 6.9 ounces, which is really light. The Leatherman Wave, I think 8.7 ounces. So quite a bit lighter. When I put the rebar on the scale, it's actually only 6.3 ounces. So quite a bit lighter than the 6.9 ounces that Leatherman has listed on their website. Then we add the sheath. It comes in at 7.7 .7 ounces, which is still lighter than the Charge, the Wave, or a lot of the other multi-tool options in this size category. So the rebar definitely gets a big win on size and weight. Now this takes us to one of the weaknesses of the rebar. There are no outside accessible tools, which for this price point, I can't complain, but just something to be aware of. There's no outside accessible tools on the Leatherman rebar. And that'll kind of feed into what the philosophy of use is later in the video. So no outside accessible tools, uh, which isn't a big deal. That's a relatively new phenomenon in the multi-tool world. So now we have the pliers and the rebar does a really good job on the pliers. They're, a little bit beefier than the Leatherman Wave pliers. Um, they're more squared off. They're kind of like the Leatherman Signal pliers, um, to be honest. And it has the 154 CM removable wire cutters. So big win on the pliers. Um, the whole tool feels very rigid. One downside is these edges here are just a little bit sharp on the outside of the handles. Um, so for prolonged use, you, um, you might kind of start to feel it, but for a backup tool or something in your survival kit, um, we'll talk about this a little bit more later, it's gonna be an excellent option. And the pliers are super robust, you don't have to worry about them breaking, especially with the removable hardened wire cutters there. Um, it's not gonna be an issue. So A plus on the pliers, I mean, straight out of the Super Tool 300 book. I mean, obviously this is the little brother of the Super Tool 300. So let's dive into the inside tools. On the right hand handle, the first tool we have 420 HC steel, 2.9 inch long blade. And that's a good knife material. Leatherman uses it on almost all of its knives um, throughout their multi-tool lineup. The uh, one thing I will criticize this knife for is Leatherman has it listed at 2.9 inches. When I measured it, the cutting length was only 2.6 inches long, which 
all in all, it's pretty good. Um, just there's something to note. Um, Leatherman, the cutting length on it itself is actually only 2.6 inches long. I do like the, sh the shape. It has a nice belly on it. And um, the tip's going to be real easy for um, just all your general all-around cutting tasks. So I do like the knife a lot. One other difference I want to cover really quickly here is the knife opens to kind of the inside of the tool, which leaves this gap here. So when you try to do press cuts, let's see if I can kind of show you better here at the box. We try to do press cuts here, it leaves a big gap right there where something like the Leatherman Wave, when you do a press cut, it's almost flush. So this knife here is gonna work really good for kind of whittling type task or if you're doing kind of a draw cut. But if you're trying to press cut something, you're gonna to need to be on the edge of a, a cutting block or freehanding it versus Leatherman Wave, you can just press up against the surface and almost get full contact on the blade. So just something else, another difference to kind of think about. And then on the other side of that same handle, we have the file. And on one side, we have the kind of cross cut metal file. And on the other side, we have kind of the single cut wood file. Um, no diamond coating like the Leatherman Wave, which um, for this price point, I think that's perfectly acceptable. I do like that it's not one of those really small files that you're finding on some of the Leatherman's other tools, such as the Sidekick, Wingman, or even the uh, Free P4, for example. So a nice large file. Um, the bottom is uh, cross cut. So you can do some groove cutting on metal if you need to. So all in all, uh, the file is definitely very serviceable. So let's take a look at the other tools in this side of the handle. Uh, first, we have a three millimeter flathead screwdriver, which uh, has a pretty nice long shank on it. So nice work there. We have a punch slash awl, good, good pick there. And then we have the seven millimeter screwdriver head, which is great for opening things like paint cans, large screwdrivers, or, or even just prying tasks in general. So, Good tool set on the right hand side. We have, uh, let's see, five tools total. And they're all locking. To unlock them, we just push on this back button here. And we'll go ahead and just close them all. And then let's take a look at the left hand handle. We have the saw on the left handle, which is a nice long saw. I really like the saw. Um, and Leatherman always does a really good job on the saw. They have excellent bite. They cut through the wood really well. They clear the chips. Um, I really like Leatherman's saws, and this is no exception. Next, we have the long Phillips head screwdriver, which there's a nice shank on that. I really do like these solid Phillips head screwdrivers. And I know a lot of people are fans of the bit drivers on, say, like the Leatherman Wave. Um, here's one right here, where you can remove the bits. Um, there's some pros and cons to that. I, I actually like these solid ones because these bits, you can lose them and then you don't have one. And unless you have a specific bit you really need, that isn't included on this tool. Um, this isn't necessarily a benefit. It's kind of short, doesn't have the reach that this does, and you can lose the bit. So something to think about. Then we have the can opener slash wire strippers, which a lot of people use the wire strippers. Um, I don't know how many people actually use can openers anymore. I kind of like the can opener just for scraping things, getting into corners. I use my can opener a lot when I'm trying to clean metal parts that have paint that are kind of stuck in the nook. Um, but um, it does have a good, very serviceable can opener or cap lifter. I do like that Leatherman put a fully serrated edge blade in here. And this is kind of a um, safety blade, if you will, where it doesn't have the real sharp point. So for like rescue cutting and stuff like this, this knife's gonna work excellent. Um, again, I really like having a fully serrated and a fully straight edge knife in my multi-tools because then if I wanna thrash on one, the other one being preserved for a more delicate task. I actually had to use a serrated blade on my Wave um, to cut some carpet this weekend. And I mean, these things just tear through fibrous material like that. So big win there. So all in all, the inside tools on the Leatherman Rebar are top notch. They have all the capabilities that you would look for in any of the competing multi-tools in the space, the medium duty multi-tool space, if you will. The only downside is that some of the inside tools are like the file, the straight edge knife, the serrated edge knife, et cetera are on the outside of things like the charge, the wave, etc. But this comes at a lower price point. The last feature on the inside of the rebar is the lanyard ring that's right next to the file. And there's no pocket clip on this particular multi-tool, so you're gonna either need to carry it in its included sheath or tie a lanyard to it to somehow attach to your pack. So who is this multi-tool really intended for? Well, at $69.95, it's a pretty good value. It's a full-featured medium-duty multi-tool 
and it's relatively light at 6.3 ounces. Now, it doesn't have a pocket clip and stuff like that, but I think for a backup tool in a toolbox, for example, this is gonna have all the capabilities you really need. And then for my particular use case, I'm gonna be using this in my hiking bag or emergency survival pack, where the lightweight 6.3 ounces is really important. And since I won't be using it every day, it's not as critical for it to have the outside accessible tools. I'd better take the cost savings and have a lightweight tool that has all the features I absolutely need. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos, such as next week's video, which will be a review of Leatherman's Charge Plus G10 Special Edition version from REI. Um, this is a pretty sweet tool, guys. You don't want to miss it. Cheers.